Revenge pornography is not an entirely new phenomenon. Uh, the American pornographic magazine Hustler published revenge pornography as early as in the, like the early 1980s. Uh, I mean, so they published images, so they, they encouraged the readers to send in photos of women, and some of those photos were published without their consent. The term revenge porn is, was not invented by academics who were trying to understand, or activists who were trying to understand this bizarre phenomenon. It was, it's invented by the industry itself. So it's like, this is what people look for, this is what is posted, and it's called what it is. It's called revenge porn. And this is what consumers all over the world type into Google, looking for images of people who did not want those images here. So what, what revenge pornography does, uh, as Marianne Franks, who's a leading law professor in this field, uh, explains, it kind of transforms uh, unwilling individuals into sexual entertainment for strangers. Um, and this is like this is like an industry scale phenomenon now. One out of ten ex-partners has uh, threatened to post uh, intimate images online of their ex, and more than half of them who threatened that they go ahead and do that. Sixty percent of them go ahead and do that. There is nothing wrong with sharing photos of yourself with someone you care for or you're attracted to. Uh, the wrongdoing here is taking images that have been shared with you in the circle of trust and sharing them with someone else. Uh, that's what's wrong. This is such a new field of legislation because uh, this field has changed so rapidly and is literally just changing as we speak uh, that lawmakers and policymakers have not managed to keep up with it.